Hi there, it's Sandy from Spiral Crafts and Workshops and in today's tutorial we're going to be making chicken wire balls or spheres. They look fairly plain on their own like this but what you can do is you can wrap them in lights and lo and behold you can light them up in the garden and they look absolutely fantastic. You do need to use outdoor lights for this but they look lovely. They're great for Christmas but this day and age everybody uses lights out in the garden anyway so if you use white lights they'll go all year round and they will look absolutely beautiful. You can make them in different sizes, so obviously this is a small one, this is a slightly larger one and you can go larger than that. But the larger you go the more unstable they become and uh, squishy, that's the word I'm after, a bit squishy, a bit soft. So uh, I'd probably stick with the smaller sizes and just do lots of them and put them everywhere. Now the other thing you can do as well is if you check out elsewhere on the tutorial I've got uh, a tutorial on how to make a wire hook. You can use these wire hooks, these go over the fence here and then you can pop your, your decorated ball on the hook at the end. So there's a separate tutorial for those if you want to go and find it on the channel. While you're looking around don't forget give us a like on this video if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification button and you will find out about new videos that are coming up and there's quite a few in the pipeline. So we'll see you in the future as well hopefully. But let's get back to this one. I'm going to walk you through the tools and materials that you're going to need to make your, your wire ball and then I'll go straight into the making and we'll crack on. See you in a minute. What tools and materials do you need to make your chicken wire ball? Very, very nice and straightforward. For materials you just need a piece of chicken wire. We'll go into the measurements in a bit and how best to cut it because there is a better way and something that makes it slightly harder for yourself so we'll, we'll cover that in a second but the only materials you're going to need is a piece of chicken wire. Moving on to your tools you're going to need a set of wire cutters and you're going to need a set of pliers as always uh, you're going to need your safety glasses and while I've got them here I'm going to put them on there we go. You're also going to need a set of gloves because you're handling the chicken wire. It is vicious stuff. Don't let it get the better of you. For cutting your chicken wire, the big pieces off the roll, then you'll need a pair of tin snips. They're the best thing. You can do it with, with wire cutters if you want. There's, there's no, nothing says you need the extra tool, but it just makes it a little bit faster with these. And a tape measure. This is, uh, this is my flexible one, which is absolutely lovely, works wonders. And a little tool that I like to have around, this one's actually telescopic, but this is a little magnet on the end, and as you can see, it's already picking up little pieces of chicken wire that have fallen off. So this just helps me keep tidy while I'm working, and I can also, if anything drops on the floor, I don't have to bend over, I can just telescope my magnet out and pick it up off the floor, because I'm slightly lazy like that. And anything that helps me do things slightly better is something I like to do. So, yeah, magnetic tool on top of everything else, and that is all you need in the tools department. This is the measurement section, and we will now take you through what you need to do to cut your piece of chicken wire. First I'm going to show you a, a graphic that shows you um, the measurements because it does make quite a big difference on how you cut it from the roll. If you cut it the right way it'll work with you, if you cut it the wrong way it'll work against you. It, you won't waste the wire either way but one way is definitely easier than the other when you cut it. Okay here's the graphic. So what you can see, I'm going to take the small piece out and, and show you with a big roll. So this is a big roll that I haven't cut from yet. And this has got the, the end wire on. Uh, when you're sculpting you will need to take this end wire off before you start. So what you'll need to do when you measure for your, your ball, the distance around the ball is here. So if you wanted a, a a ball that was 20, cent 20 centimetres all the way around, you, you'd want 20 centimetres around here and you'd want 10 centimetres down the tube. Now if you do cut it the wrong way, I'm going to take that out of the way, 
if you cut it the wrong way you get this happening because you're actually rolling it against how it was originally rolled on the roll. So you can salvage it as you can see I've, I've managed to uh, here I've managed to, to, to put the, 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 the end in okay um, but it does fight against you and as you can see here it's, it's just a very weird flat strange sort of shape that um, that is not really circular at all and not really looking like it's going to be circular but you can work it into the right shape because it's metal and it will mould okay however if you cut it so that around here is your two times the distance and down here is your one times the distance then even just hooking these two ends together you can see that you're starting to get your sphere being made ready for you so it is the best way to do it and if you do get it wrong don't worry about it you've just got a little bit more work in the shaping department to do so that's what we start with and once you've got it cut we can get on to the making okay you've taken your snips you've put your gloves on and you've gone off and you've cut your perfect piece of wire it's two times here one times here and it's all ready to go like so. So it's almost almost there already. And I've got my pliers and I've got my cutters if I need them. In a minute. And what we're going to do is take our sharp bits at the end of <clears throat> the piece. So I'm going to take these sharp bits here and on either end and I'm just going to interlink them like I've been doing all along and make sure everybody's hooked together. They probably won't need much encouragement actually because they uh, they tend to grab onto each other even when you're not looking. So then I'm going to locate these sharp bits in here and I'm going to pull them, the ones that have gone underneath whichever side it is you want to pull them up to the top. So you want to Oops, do it that way. Let's try it that way. There we go. So it's underneath, and I'm just pulling it, bending it up to the top, and folding it round this piece of chicken wire here. And then I'm just going to give it a, a squeeze so that we're now reasonably well attached, although not, not quite secure yet. There is another piece here that is tucked underneath, and I'm just going to move it so I can see it a bit better all round on me and then grab that piece and bring that up to the top and give that one a pinch as well and then you're starting to get a, a far more secure uh, seam effectively you're making a seam down your um, tube at the moment it's not a sphere yet but it will be so I'm going to go down and seal this seam off and uh, fast forward it a bit so you can watch me as I go So that's the last one. All I've done is I've done exactly the same thing all the way down. I've just curled pieces of the chicken wire over the pointy bits so that they're hooked over the, the piece on top. I am going to go down and just pinch a few of those tighter because they aren't quite tight enough for my liking. And a little bit less sticky out because as I say whatever sticks out usually comes back and, and bites me. Just going to grab that one there because that's an easy easy one to curl over as well. And I missed it on the first pass. There we go. So now what we have is a, is a completed seam. Now this for those of you that, that have, have watched the B video this is virtually identical to the B video 
Um, so the technique that you learn either here or in the B video will allow you to do both the, the sphere shape, the ball shape and the B. Just with a slightly different shape piece of chicken wire. So once you have this, you then want to put the seam on top and pinch together the sides like that. Now before you pinch them, so you can see where it's going, so I can see I need to cut here and here. So when you pinch them together, I haven't, I've got a little bit of um, a short piece that I could use for wrapping but not quite enough so I'm going to make a longer piece and I'm going to cut either side like that and then I'm going to lift out the long pieces like so and then when you pinch it together you've got lots of long pieces here for, for wrapping and it makes your job just a little bit easier so I'm going to wrap that under there so all you're doing is taking your, your long pieces of chicken wire and you're curling them under the piece on the opposite side you know, it's not always a, a neat process but as long as it's attached that'll be fine so you can leave those in there oh, and if you get little bits falling off like that don't worry because that's just where you, because you've cut it and I just grab my magnetic tool and take everything away now what's happened is you've got a flat bit here and you've got two corners so I'm actually going to cut the corners off across, let me see, across there. So I want to lose this here and cut it across where the, the tool is. So I'm going to grab my cutters, try and leave some little bit of, of wire sticking up so you can use it for attaching. I'm going to go all the way around underneath and up top on the other side. I'm going to pull that bit off, so I've now cut the corner off compared to this end. You can see this is rounder and this is pointed out still. And I'm going to push this together, just fold any in if you've got anything being awkward. And then I'm going to use the pointy bits to wrap under like that. Wrap that over. I don't want to take too much of that one. So it doesn't need to be. I'll put that one under as well and bring that one up. There we go. And that's sticking out on its own, so I'm just going to tidy that away. Um, it doesn't need to be particularly curved. I just just want it to be sloped so that 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 is, hasn't got a pointy corner like that one has. So I'm going to do the same here, I'm going to cut along the uh, tool to cut that top corner off. There we go. Through the seam area and up through the top. Bend it a little bit so it's off. There we go, stitch it over there. And then again, I'm going to pinch this together, use my pliers, and just wrap wrap the loose wires around each the opposite side so that they're nicely into each other. Now I've got a little bit sticking up there, so I think I might just Cut that bit off. Um, I might have to go back and retwist a little bit. I just want to cut. There we go. Got it. So it is pretty much a it's a work in progress as you go. I'll put that one down there so I can I can reach it and pull it through. Let's do it with the other hand, it's a bit easier for you to see though. 
and then this one can go under there and attach and just tuck some of these other wires in as you're doing it and that is pretty much what I wanted it to be a little bit of a strange shape but that's okay because it's going to change now anyway so then what you do is pop your hand in mind if you're not like me if you're not wearing anything on your sleeves but pop your hand in and using your, your curled up fingers this this is still slightly pointed so we want to round this out now we want to start rounding this out so I'm just going to push it against the table and then see it's attacking my gloves already at this end that's it and then I want to flatten this out like that and then I want to lose that corner a bit as well fold that in actually that's that's kind of folded over so I think I might just cut it off anyway if it's if it's not um, just creasing a little bit then uh, I might just there we go just take it off anyway I will reattach that loose wire so it's still sealed and then I'm going to flatten it like that so we've got the curve of the ball so like I say it's exactly the same process we used in in the B and that's <coughs> That's your first stage. Now obviously second time at this end you're not going to be able to put your hand in. So what I'll do is I'll just put it on fast forward, I'll go quiet, put it on fast forward, you can watch me do the second end and then I'll come back to you and talk to you when we get to the point where um, we need to do the shaping. It is worth remembering to keep your seam on top again for your second end, do it exactly the same way. So keep your seam on top and pull your, your sides together so that you end up with this seam in the same place on both sides. Just makes it a little bit more symmetrical and neater. So I'm just going to cut these so I can attach them together and then I'll get moving on fast forward. Okay, so now we've got to the point where we've sealed it all up, but we can't put our hand down the inside to shape it. So what I normally do is I stick fingers in either side of the chicken wire, pull out and flatten. So you can still do it with gloves on, it is possible, pull out and flatten it down. Even if you have to get your finger inside and flatten it from the inside, like that and just flatten it all around and then same again all the way up the seam flatten it out and then into the corner on the other side flatten that round sometimes you can push at the top as well and it's it's rounded out not quite as well straight away as the other end but it is coming so then what we can start to do is we can just start to mold shape the ball with our hands um, you definitely need gloves on for this because it's going to stick into your treat if you don't. So we've got a little bit more of a ball shape but grab your pliers because things will start depressing in that you don't want to depress in um, and things will be sticking out that you don't want sticking out so I've got a bit there sticking out so I'm just going to shove that bit on the inside and it is just a matter at this point now of just using your pliers and lifting the sphere and then once you've lifted it you can pull it out like that so we've got more width to it um, that then makes this go in a bit so you then might want to go over to this section and just lift this out again 
and it's really just about going round, taking the squareness out of it, so mould it, press it in a little bit more and then eventually you're starting to get something that's a lot more spherical looking. You will have little bumps in places and that's what you, you need to go round and adjust but eventually you will come up with something that is a lot more square, uh, a lot more circular than it started when you first attached it together. I would then suggest you go around putting all the little bits that you can see sticking up into the, pointing into the sphere a little bit just to protect yourself. Do keep these away from children and pets. I do not recommend that you use them around children and pets because there are sharp bits on these so hang them out of reach of everybody or put them in places where they won't come in contact with, with kids and animals. So you just go around for your own protection as well, putting in all the little pieces. And that's really, you can always hook some more in and firm up some of the, uh, the original attachments that you did and just carry on shaping it until you're ready with what, what you've got. And then once you've got your sphere shape, you can grab your lights and start wrapping it in lights if you want to. And that's what I've done with these. I've actually used an elastic band, this blue elastic band to hold the, the wire on, but you can use another little piece of wire just to, to keep them uh, attached to the ball, that's not a problem. So I've just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped around this one so that we get to the point where we've got this, uh, this nice ball effect with the lights that looks really quite pretty when it, when it goes outside as well. If you are going outside with them use outdoor lights, these are indoor lights um, but they will need outdoor lights if they're going outside. And don't forget that you can use hooks to put into your ball and hang them onto the fence or onto a wall. The tutorial for the hooks is elsewhere on the channel so just pop off and have a look and while you're there if you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos that are coming up because there are more in the pipeline. But if you find the, the hooks tutorial you can make as many hooks as you want to hook these around on your fences. Also, you could use fishy, fishy line or string even if you wanted and just hang them out on trees or on fences, fence posts, um, whatever you want to really. But they are they're quite versatile, you can make them in lots of different sizes, you can make lots of them because they're, they're quite straightforward to do and easy to make. And you can have a set all decorated up in your garden to enjoy for yourself. So thank you for watching and thank you for making your ball. Do send us photos of anything you make in any of our tutorials, not just this one. And join us on social with Facebook. Give us a like if you like us and we will see you soon with lots more tutorials. Bye.